Right, I need to set this up in the middle so I can cut a, a slot down there, an eighth slot. Just sit it on a parallel. Nip the vase up. Just bed it down with a, a rubber hammer. That's gripping the parallel so we know it's sitting all the way down. We need to line up the centre of the machine obviously with the centre of the, the job. For that I'm going to use a wiggler. I've shown this fuse many times before. Very simple but very effective. I'm going to read a 24.9, 24.965, and half of that is 12.5. So we go 12.5. Lock up the axis, that means the centre line of the machine is going to be dead in the line with the centre. If the workpiece, I've got the little adapter I made last week with an 8 mm cutter in it. Very, very gently. pin mounted exactly the same way, I need to find the centre of the pin so I can drill and tap a 3 mil hole in it. Gives a reading of 10, half 10, 15, sorry gives a reading of 20 because that's 10 and that's 10. So we'll turn it back to 10. Just want to make sure this vase is tight, it's got a really good hold of it. That's a tapping drill for 3mm. I want to drill it in 8mm. I don't want to come right through the back. I must admit I do not like using little little taps. It's got the same ambition in life. There's a milling cut I had. We'll 
try and get run a little bit truer than that in the chuck. That's better. Right, start the drill up, turn it off, and as it slows down, start the light out. Right, tend to put it together. Spring goes up the up the hole. That slides onto there and the little arm bolt goes into the slot. Come on you little tink are you? Like that. Right now it's bottomed out on the threads and that's the that's the spring loaded. That's the spring loading we've got there. Not a lot but it's enough. That's it there. Right, I've got a bit of round bar in the in the lathe here, it could be square, any shape you want really, because I'm using a four jaw chuck. What it has got it's got a centre punch mark there, and I want that centre punch mark to run through with the axis of the lathe so it's going to be quite well offset but the way I do this, the quick way to get it very very near is I simply bring in the lathe tail stock put the point of the tail stock into the centre pop mark which is there so we've basically got it held where we want it then tighten the chuck jaws up just a little nip on each jaw right so we've got it held with that offset with that punch mark running very very near to the center in the lathe. Right next I put the wiggle ball we've just made into the center punch hole and put the lathe tail stock into the back of the bar. If you watch we'll put a little bit of spring prairie on there roughly in the center that just just stops it from moving that's all in the bar the bar's, the bar's visibly moving very very slightly. Next thing to do is put a clock gauge on here. The nearer to the point you get, the more accurate you're going to be. Right, I've got the clock gauge touching the bar. And it's... 7 thou. So that's 7 thou before you even start to adjust it. All we do is find the high point. Which is there. And tighten the high jaw. Once again find the high point which is there. High point there. So I loosen the one opposite off very slightly. Tighten that one. Now we're getting near. That's a high point there. High point again. And we're getting near now. Right, that's very near. That's only a couple of tenths. To all intended purposes, that's 
just about spot on. This is the belt set up on the top of the lathe. You can adjust the speed from 200 up to 2300. At the minute it's set for high speed. That's the big motor pulley under the small idler. The biggest idler under the smaller spindle pulley. That gives me 2300 RPM. The problem I've got is on this pulley here. I'll take the belt off and show you what's happening. I'll show you with this belt. This is the belt off the Miller machine. It's an automotive type belt because I'm in the automotive trade. The original belts were solid. These ones have got cutouts in. They last a lot longer on cars with cutouts in. The problem I've got is when it goes on the pulley like that, these teeth are hitting each other and that's what's causing the noise. It won't do any harm, it just makes a horrible noise. It only happens in the real high speed. It didn't happen with the original solid belts on, but the original solid belts were quite badly worn. So that's what the that's what the horrible noise is. I've tried talcum powder, I've tried WD40, I've tried everything. Nothing makes the noise go away. I finally get around to try and sort out some of my tape or shank drilling. I've got boxes and boxes full of tape or shank drills. Uh, some very good, some very poor. I wanted to sort out a set of decent ones and I'm making another stand to accommodate them so I can put them on the wall. At the minute I just had a box under the bench which is a total waste of time. I have got some behind me lathe, some of the smaller sizes I use all the time. I started making a rack. This is part of it. Look at that twat. This is for the big stuff. That's number four most tape I'm going to make another bar here with three more taper. Those ideas, those ideas the day are all for small old world centres like this. These are just bits of scrap box section I happen to have lying around. I've actually welded two bits together just to get a piece long enough. Once I've painted the crane passing on the wall, it's doing the job and certainly look the part. Adapter. It takes the quill of the milling machine from R8 to most taper, quite a handy tool. That's four more taper, it's got a three to two adapter in. So they run nice and true. And they don't slip like a drill shop. That's a good fit for the, the bottom side of it, so this is going to be the bottom of the stand. We'll drill all in, we'll turn it over and drill another hole in that fits the taper up here. Then we can eyeball it and get the drill button just nicely on the hole.
They've got a decent fit in there. Certainly won't fall over. Rags of holes, takes the pillars off. I'm holding this by hand, but it's actually still wedged in place. Certainly isn't going to go anywhere. Somebody's wrote their name on there. I've got the drill stand finished off, painted and passing it to the wall. I used to have dividers and calipers up here, and I very rarely use them, so I put them away to draw. And the drills are a lot more handy there. Plus, they're all rattling about in the drawer. They get hitting each other and getting chipped. These are imperial ones. I've got some metric ones to sort out as well, but these are the ones I'll be using all the time. Somebody says, why don't you start making and selling these things? Well, if I, if I have enough interest, if people want a one, send us an email, and if I get enough interest, I will do a few and put them on eBay. Once again, it just remains to say, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for clicking the like button, and of course a massive thanks for all the well wishes that are still coming in towards my wife Deb and my dad. Thanks very much. This is a simple adapter that goes from R8, which is what the spill mach the spilling machine. John, you're a bell end. Bastard. That's what he makes really for that design to do. Oh, you bastard, you. John, you're a clumsy twat.